Introducing the Timber Van Conversion. Offered for the Sprinter, Transit, and ProMaster, fully installed for under 25K. The Timber Van Conversion is a complete conversion van that includes a full water system, bed, electrical, and cabinetry. You can add on different options including windows, fan, heater, and a fridge. With these customizations, you can make sure you get exactly what you want without having to pay for anything you don't need. So without further ado, let's check it out. To start, we're going to go over everything that's included in the standard timber van conversion. This includes a marine grade flooring. It's a continuous one piece flooring that runs throughout the entire floor and is installed underneath all of the cabinetry. This is mounted on half inch marine grade plywood so you can make sure that, that floor is going to stay stable and durable throughout the entire lifespan of the van. Also included in the timber van conversion is a full insulation and paneling kit. The insulation is throughout all of the walls, ceilings, and doors and is a 30 millimeter thick synthetic D-mat insulation. The paneling is quarter inch Baltic birch and is custom cut specific for your chassis. The paneling can be either finished or unfinished depending on how you plan to complete your van. With the unfinished kit, you're going to get raw Baltic birch panels that you can paint, stain, or clear coat. The finished version is going to be a tweed upholstery for both the walls and the ceiling. This is a very durable fabric that is industry standard, that has very great abrasion and sound deadening properties. For the cabinetry, the timber van conversion comes standard with our wheel well cabinets that are modeled very closely after our award winning classic design. This includes the driver side wheel well cabinet as well as the passenger which integrates directly with our by slide bed system. Also included is our small pantry cabinet in between the wheel well cabinets and the kitchen cabinet which is included and two overhead cabinets, a double door over the top of the kitchen, as well as our shelf cabinet that's mounted over the rear of the bed. All of this cabinetry comes standard and you can get it in either finished or unfinished. Again, with the unfinished similar to the paneling, you can either paint, clear coat, or stain it depending on what finish you're looking for. For the finished option, this is going to be a beeswax and oil finished that's applied both inside and outside the cabinetry giving the cabinets great protection as well as bringing out the warmth of the natural wood grain. All of the cabinetry is constructed out of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, which is some of the highest end plywood that you can buy. This ensures the durability of the cabinets even when going down rough and washboardy roads. Standard for the timber van conversion includes a complete water system and electrical system. For the water system, you have 20 gallons of fresh water capacity a sink and faucet that are powered by a 12 volt DC water pump and 12 gallons of gray water that are stored internally to help from freezing in those cold winter months. The electrical system includes a Yeti 1500X made by Goal Zero. This is an all-in-one power system that's going to integrate with 200 watts of solar that are mounted onto the roof, alternator charging that's powered directly off the vehicle's engine, it also includes a 2000 watt inverter and the electrical system has switches, USB ports and additional 120 volt outlets mounted conveniently throughout the van. All right, now that we've gone over some of the standard features that are included, let's dive into more detail showing you some of the key features of the timber van conversion as well as some of the options that are available. For installing the paneling, We've designed both the structural elements that support the panels and make sure that they stay nice and straight in the corners uh, where the walls meet the ceiling. We've designed that structural to allow you to maintain the factory routing of the wiring harness. This means that you don't have to unplug, cut, or modify the factory Ford Sprinter or ProMaster harness to be able to install the paneling and get a nice clean finish. For the transit, specifically on this vehicle, we've also included some custom 3D printed parts that allow for that wire routing in the back, again, to go unmodified. So some great features that are included in the paneling system that's included in the timber van conversion. 
for the cabinetry. Again, as mentioned, this is all made out of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. This has the oil finish and this includes some of the highest in hardware that's available for the cabinetry. So this is all bloom hardware, very nice, really easy to adjust um, as things you know settle in into a van and naturally will kind of move or adjust. You can easily adjust these with these three-way adjusting hinges. We also have marine grade hardware. So these are stainless steel latches and it's all mounted on soft close hardware with those gas struts to make it really easy to open and close these overhead doors. For the lower cabinet down here, we have our standard galley cabinet, which gives you some ample storage on both sides and contains the two six gallon gray water tanks. These utilize quick disconnect fittings to allow you to easily attach and detach the tanks when you're going to drain them. You also have two valves overhead so that you can turn these off and on in the event that they fill up and you have some water in the sink, you can go ahead and close those valves as needed. You'll also see the water pump mounted inside and the pump switch, which there are two of them, one mounted here on the galley and the other one mounted on the back of the wheel well cabinet so that you can turn it off and on, whether you're using the sink or the rear spray down off the back of the wheel well cabinet. Up front on this cabinet here, you have your overhead light switch. We have six overhead lights, LED, powered directly off that Goal Zero Yeti. And these are push button switches as well as dimmer switches. So uh, press and hold to dim or brighten the lighting. Once you've reached the level, you can release where you like it. When you turn it off and you turn it back on, it actually has a memory in it. So it will remember that last known lighting level. If you want it brighter, simply just press and hold as the lights brighten, you can release once it's at the desired level. There are two switch locations for the overhead lights, one here on the kitchen and one up above the bed. So you don't have to get out of bed to turn off and on the lights. Finishing out the kitchen cabinet here on the side up front is included a 12 volt USB port. So it's a dual USB port up here, as well as a 120 volt outlet that's powered directly off that goal zero inverter. All right, as we move back, some additional cabinetry back here. We'll talk about the bed in more detail here in a second, but this is our bi-slide bed. It is fully removable if you wanna get it out of the way. Uh, but our two wheel well cabinets have some great storage on either side. This has some adjustable shelving. Uh, it has some little pins here, so you can move it up and down or fully remove it depending on what you plan on storing in here. You have a large open Cubby here has a large lip on it that's going to keep things from falling out. And the reason we like having these cubbies is if you do plan on carrying additional gear under the bed, whether it's bikes, totes, uh, or anything else you're planning on carrying, you don't have a door that's going to open up and hit whatever you're carrying under the bed. So it allows easy access to that stuff, again, without having to move stuff out of the way to get access. Same concept here with our pantry cabinet. So this joins the kitchen to the wheel well cabinets here and allows for some nice little storage. So for all those little knickknacks or food or whatever you plan on putting in there, it gives you some nice little storage. It can also be used as steps up into the bed uh, if you need. Uh, now the water passes through here. So we have some plumbing that actually routes through this cabinet that pulls the water from the 20 gallon water tank into through that pump and up into the sink. The 20 gallon water tank is housed uh, behind this cover here. Four easy screws to take out and you can get access to that entire water tank that's behind um, and some additional plumbing that typically you don't need to get access to, but if you ever need to service anything, really easy to pop that cover off and get access to it. On this side here, we have our full electrical system. So the Goal Zero Yeti is mounted down below and we have additional shelving again utilizing that same pin system so you can move it up and down but we also have some of our electronics mounted back behind here which includes our 12 volt fuse block that's going to power some of our 12 volt appliances uh, and our dimmer module uh, that powers the led lights and works with our switches there's also some additional cubbies we have three cubbies here over the top of the wheel well 
Again, no doors on these. So these give you really nice, quick, easy access without having to move any of your gear to adjust doors on there. All right, we'll talk about the bed system. This is modeled very closely after our bi-slide bed. This is gonna be nearly a king size mattress when fully deployed. So very spacious. If you're six foot three, six foot four, you're gonna be very comfortable on this bed. Uh, I'm just over six two. Plenty of space, both vertically in these transit vans. And again, even if it was just a single person, you could sleep side to side because you do have that 76 inches, so six foot four side to side in the van. So these transits are a little bit wider and taller than the Sprinters, and they give you some great sleeping options and a really nice large mattress. Now the mattress is a two-part system, so we have a pillow topper on one side and a mid-density foam on the other. These are reversible, so you can flip them over depending on your comfort level. The bi-slide bed, as mentioned, fully removable. It has four latches underneath the bed here that's going to allow you to take it out and or loosen when you go to transition from stowed mode, which we're in right now, to the full bed mode. So loosening up these brackets underneath, we can spin these guys around to unlatch them from the side rails here. Go ahead and grab the handles and slide it out. Now it's a tele telescoping system, so it doesn't require stacking and unstacking of panels. So it makes it really easy. You can leave the cushions on top. You don't have to take all the cushions down, set up all your panels, put all your cushions back up. So that telescoping functionality really makes it very easy to transition back and forth between the stowed position and the full bed mode. So once you got the slide out, you can go ahead and pull the mattress down and it's that easy. Now you can leave this in the bed position even when driving. Just recommend that you go ahead and tighten these latches back down onto the rail so that you don't have any rattling when you're going down the road. So simply snug those down on both sides and it's gonna be nice and tight and secure going down the road. Now to convert back, just the opposite. We'll go ahead and loosen the latches. Take the top cushion, slide it on top of the rear, and slide the bed back. Go ahead and latch those latches back down before you go to drive, but you can see how much space that frees up quickly in the van, gets you some more living space back when you don't need the full bed setup. And again, depending on your length, you could even ditch one of the cushions, leave it in the stowed position, and actually sleep side to side if you prefer. Above the bed, we have our USB ports. We also have an additional switch for our overhead LED lights, as well as a 120 volt outlet. All up there by the bed makes it really convenient for charging up phones and being able to control those lights without having to get out of the bed. Now you'll notice here on the window sections here, the windows are not standard. These are an option that we'll talk about, but you'll notice here that these actually look like flare spaces. Uh, those fiberglass extensions that can be mounted onto the outside of the van to make it wider. But this is actually just the natural bump out in the van. So this is going to be the skin of the van. Um, we upholster over the top when you're getting the fully finished timber van conversion. But this gives you a lot of additional space for that extra width for the bed without having to pay the additional cost of those flares. So you get some nice returns here that finish out these window bump outs, giving you that nice finished look, added width without any additional cost. So let's jump around to the back and we'll show you some more details on the back of the wheel well cabinets. All right, here at the back of the van, we'll start on the driver's side. We have additional storage, so another shelf cabinet here uh, at the back with the door closure there. You'll notice for our wheel well water tank, you actually have a sight slot right here. So this is going to allow you to see where that tank level is. Uh, just by viewing through here, you'll be able to see that water level inside the tank. Just a really easy way to be able to monitor how much water you have left in your system. When you go to fill, we have our water fill port for the fresh water tank. This is a standard garden hose fitting. Just make sure you use a water safe hose when filling. There is an overflow tube integrated onto the tank. So as you fill that water tank, 
the water is going to spill out once it's full and actually come out of a tube that's mounted directly underneath the van here. So you don't have to worry about flooding the van or overfilling your tank. Once it's full, you'll see that water come out the bottom and you'll know your tank is completely topped off. You can go ahead and shut off your water hose at that point. We also have our rear spray down off the back. This is about a six foot, um, maybe seven foot hose here. It's going to allow you to have this exterior wash and you can power this up, pressurize this system using the 12 volt water pump that's gonna pull water right out of the water tank and give you that pressure back here to be able to use this as potentially an outside shower, washing off bikes, paddle boards, dogs, kids, muddy boots, whatever else you got going on. Uh, nice to have this sort of utility wash out the back. When you're done, simply just feed the hose back in and stow there. Very nice unit here, full stainless steel, all metal. There's no cheap plastic components on anything that we supply. These kits use really high-end hardware throughout. That's included here on the our master water control valve, also stainless steel control valve here. And this gives you three different positions. You can have this in the on position, which is going to allow the water from the tank to get to the water pump. So that's going to be on. Off, which is straight up and down, which it's in right now. And then you can put it into the drain mode, which is going to drain that 20 gallon over the wheel well tank right out the bottom of the van if you're going to go winterize it or you just need to flush the tank. So three in one valve right there makes it really simple uh, to control that water system from that master valve. On the passenger side here, we have another water pump switch. So if you are going to use the wash down off the back, simply push the button, turns on the water pump, it'll pressurize, and then you can go ahead and use it. When you're all done, go ahead and just turn the pump off. Up here on the bed system, we have two more latches on the bed. Loosen these guys up, you can swivel them around. This will actually allow you to fully remove the bed in the event that you need to carry something taller. So if you need to have a motorcycle, use your van as a utility van. If you got tools you need to put in here, carry a fridge, uh, just have some taller items. Uh, really easy to just loosen those. If the front ones are loosened as well, you can just lift this whole system right out. Uh, it's a little easier with two people, but can certainly be done with one if needed. Uh, you also have to stow the cushions uh, if you need to take them out but you could also lay them inside the van, strap them down, carry them with you if you're carrying something big like a motorcycle, and then once you get to where you're going at the campsite, roll the motorcycle out and get your bed set back up. So some nice uh, versatility here with this bi-slide bed. Uh, gives you that option for the stowed position, bed position, or fully removed. Let's jump back inside the van and we're gonna go over some of the additional options that are available with the timber van conversion. So as mentioned, the timber van conversion has several different options that are available to make sure you can get exactly what you want in your van. One of the first options we're gonna talk about here is the Wabasto heater. This is available in either gasoline or diesel, so it can be used for either chassis, no matter which one you have, that Sprinter, Transit, or Promaster. Here we have the Wabasto remote control. It's mounted right here on the front of the galley. This is a thermostat here, so you will be able to set temperature on this, and the Wabasto heater will adjust its heat output based on your temperature setting. The lowest setting here is about 55 degrees. About midway is gonna be 75 degrees, and on the max setting, it'll be 95 degrees that it'll be looking to get your van nice and cozy. The unit itself is gonna be mounted here under the passenger seat. So you have your register, your hot output register right here. This is going to produce heat for the entire van. These units that are included in the timber van conversion are the Evo 40 models. What's great about these units, they have substantial heat output, a lot of BTUs. So they're gonna do a great job of heating all these van chassis. So the uh, 148 Transit, the 144 Sprinter, and the Promasters. Typically, this is the unit that we're using for some of the larger vans, so lots of heat. If you're gonna be doing a lot of cold weather camping, you will have no problem, even down into the single digits or negative temperatures, staying nice and warm inside. 
Okay, these tap right into the fuel tank of the vehicle. So there's no additional fuel required. You don't have to fill up a secondary tank, no propane anywhere in these vans. All you gotta do is keep fuel in the tank. It does require a quarter tank minimum. And that's because we set that fuel pickup tube about a quarter of a tank above the bottom so that this unit will never drain your tank if you're out running it. If you're out in the middle of the woods, out camping, you don't wanna drain your tank by running the heater. So it will shut down once your tank gets below a quarter and you'll have to go and get fueled up, but at least you got some fuel in the tank. Now, this unit can be run with all the doors and windows closed. It fully seals to the outside of the van and it's actually sucking in air and exhausting all of the fumes outside the van. So again, all windows and doors closed while you're driving, while you're parked, you can run this unit whenever you want. Last key feature I wanna mention about the Evo 40 is it had automatic altitude adjustment integrated into it. That means that as you go up and down while you're traveling, if you're heading up into the mountains, Rocky Mountain National Park, going skiing uh, in Colorado, Utah, uh, or you're heading down to sea level, this unit will automatically adjust both the fuel pump and the fan speed to make sure that you have clean combustion regardless of the altitude, making sure this unit stays working for years and years to come. All right, the next option we wanna talk about are the windows. We have three different selections that you can choose from. That's going to be just the driver side forward window. These have bug nets that are integrated as well as two operable sections. So these just twist open with these knobs here. They're awning style, which means the window tilts open. What makes these great is that they will actually shed rain in the event that you're caught in a storm. You can still have those windows open, get ventilation, even when the weather is nasty, right? Slider windows, in the event that it starts raining, you're gonna have to close that unless you don't mind getting water inside the van. So with these, you don't have that problem. They work great. They add some really nice visibility, some lighting in the van, uh, checking your blind spots while you're driving. So a great option to consider this driver side forward. Behind me here, we also have the bed windows. This is, comes as a set, so you will get both a driver and a passenger side, they're identical. They're also awning style. They are going to have the knobs right here, just like the front one. You can crank these out. They have the integrated bug nets as well. And again, fully awning style, so they work great even in the rain. Now these are gonna be great above the bed uh, to get you ventilation in the sleeping area, add some nice visibility, especially if you don't have rear door windows in your van. These are another great option to consider. So you can do just the driver side forward, you can do just the rear bed set, or you can combine them as a, a complete set for all three windows in one. Another additional ventilation option is our fan. This is gonna be a rear mounted Max Air 7500K fan. So this has the integrated rain hood, it has the smoke cover on there. So it's going to allow lighting in, but it's also going to keep it a little bit cooler in the summer by having that smoke cover on there. It is a fully electric fan and includes not only a remote control that you can have up in the front of the dash um, so that you can control it while you're driving, but it also has full controls on the fan unit itself. To operate it, simply hit the power button either here on the remote or up here on the fan. It's going to go ahead and automatically lift up and begin ventilating. This has 10 different speeds that you can set it to so we can increase the fan speed or decrease the fan speed. We can also reverse the fan so that it's either pulling air out or bringing fresh air in. There's also a option for a thermostat so that allows you to set a temperature on here for the fan to automatically turn off and on if the temperature gets above that set point. So a lot of great features in here. Uh, with that integrated rain hood, it's not gonna just automatically close on you if it does start raining. Uh, that allows it to stay open even in the rain or snow to make sure that you can ventilate. So if you're cooking uh, or you just need some fresh air, it's gonna work regardless of the weather. When you're all done, go ahead and hit the power button to go and close up the fan. And when you're all finished, you can go ahead and slide that remote right back in the holster for the fan. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about the finishing option as well. Here is a fully finished version. So this is the timber van conversion with the finish kit. 
So we have tweed throughout, so mounted onto the bump outs of the van. We have the panels that are fully wrapped as well as the ceiling all in this gray tweed fabric. So this is stain resistant, odor resistant. It's an industrial fabric, so it has a really high abrasion rate. So it's gonna stay looking good for years and years to come, even with that hard van use. So with that finishing kit, all of the panels, walls gonna be fully wrapped in this tweed. And then we also have the oil finish on all of the cabinetry. So as mentioned previously, this is an oil and wax finish. This is all gonna be fully sanded as well, so you get a nice smooth edges. This is gonna keep water and moisture from getting inside the cabinetry and causing problems. So it's, it's key that you finish it even if you don't opt for the finishing kit. You wanna make sure that you put some sort of finish on there. Again, you can do paint, stain, or clear coat if you don't get the finish option, but if you want it, so you don't have to do anything and it's ready to go as soon as you pick up the van, then this is a, a good option to consider. So it's gonna allow that natural wood grain to shine through, give it the protection on the cabinetry and give it a really nice warm look and feel. One option that this customer did not opt for, but we wanna mention it here, is the option to add a fridge. Now the wiring harness that comes standard is going to include the connections for the fridge. So even if you don't get it, you will have the wiring there. So you can always add it later on. And if you do get it, this door is gonna go away and it's really easy to take off if you did wanna add the fridge later on. So it's two quick disconnects here and you can actually take this whole door off and then the fridge will slide right in and you have the connectors right here to be able to hook up any fridge. Uh, we have a couple of models that we know will fit right in here, but if you want to measure it out and find another one that you like, you do have that option. But we also have one that will come included with the van conversion if you select that option. Included in the Timber Van Conversion Electrical System is the Yeti 1500X made by Goal Zero. This is an all-in-one power system, which includes a 126 amp hour lithium ion battery, a DC to DC charger, allowing you to connect directly to the vehicle's alternator, solar charger, and a 2000 watt inverter with a 3500 watt surge capability. Now, all of the necessary quick disconnects are included in the timber wiring harness. This allows you to easily connect or disconnect the Goal Zero if you need to take it out of the van. You can take it inside, charge it up before your trip, slide it in and plug it in. You can also use this around the campsite or the house as it is an all-in-one unit. Now with that included wiring harness, you're also going to get the 12 volt fuse block that's mounted up above. This houses all of the fuses needed for the appliances and all options that are available with the timber van conversion. This includes the LED lights, the water pump, the Wabasto heater, fridge, and fan, again, depending on the options you select. Above the fuse block here is our dimmer module. This is what controls those overhead lights. So this full wiring harness and all of these components are all included to make this a streamlined and very clean install for the timber van conversion. If you'd like to learn more about the timber van conversion or any of our other DIY products, be sure to check us out at titandiykits.com. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more great content. Until next time, we'll see you on the road.